Hello, it's Nikki here. I'm doing something a little different today. I thought I would do a bit of a chat about uh, how I work by rotation, just in case people... Well, I know some people are interested because I do get comments on my videos about it and also on Instagram. So I thought I'd go through that but I really am terrible at talking and stitching at the same time. So I am going to do a recording of me talking about the rotation and then I'll record a stitch with me and I'll put the two together. And then if you want to watch the stitch with me, you can. Or if you just want to listen, grab your stitching and listen along. Now, this isn't just for people that want to start a rotation or have got a rotation and want to tweak it. I'd really, it would probably be really useful for everyone. If you have a rotation that works for you, if you could add anything to the comments below, just to give people a bit of a steer when they're trying to plan out what they want to stitch next year and how they want to order it. And so, I've got some notes. I'll try not to get too sidetracked or distracted or whatever, but yeah. <laughs> I'll make a start. So I thought I'd just start with a bit of a background about rotations and why you might want them. And usually the main reason is you've got several m multiple projects on the go. And there's a lot of different ways of organising your rotation. Almost as many as there are different styles of stitching, and we know how <laughs> never-ending that is. And the main first thing I want to put is say is that they're not suited to everyone. I mean, if you're a monogamous stitcher, you're not going to need a rotation. And good on you for being a monogamous stitcher. I used to be, but I fell off the wagon with that, and it's difficult to get back on it. Also, if you're kind of the spontaneous stitch what you want, when you want to stitch it, just swap whenever you want to swap, pick things up, put things down on a whim, whatever, you probably don't need a rotation either. Just carry on enjoying what you're doing and getting the most out of it. I... I'm a planner, I need to know what I'm going to be working on. If you give me a choice of three things, I'm not going to be able to make a decision on what I want to do. And <laughs> I won't get anything done that evening. So that's kind of why I like to have a rotation, because I like to plan ahead and I like to know what I'm going to be doing. So... <clears throat> The, the more works in progress that you have, the bigger your rotation is going to be. You need to find a good way to keep track of it. I, I, I found myself reaching the point of having too many projects started that I wanted to work on. And I've been working, working those down over the last couple of years recently. Uh, so... What I've been doing would, was to just work across a limited number of the projects that I had started and trying really hard not to start anything new, although that doesn't work. Um, but as I said, the more projects you've got, the bigger your rotation's going to be. And what that will affect is how often you're going to work on your projects. So that's why I, I kind of, I had eight or nine projects. I only did four or five at a time, just to, and the others just waited until there was a space in the rotation because I'd finished something. It's painful doing that, making those decisions. Like I said, I'm not very good at making decisions. So <laughs> you have to be strict with yourself if you're going to do that, 
but you don't have to do that to have a rotation. Which brings me to another point. Your rotation is a guide. It's a way to plan what projects you're going to be stitching on and when. If something isn't working, like everything else with stitching, change it. Forcing yourself down a certain path to stitch a certain way to follow a certain rotation. If you're not enjoying it, it's going to stop you enjoying your sewing and you won't want to pick it up. And you might not want to pick it up at all. So don't force yourself to do anything. Remember that you're the master of your rotation, not the other way around. Another consideration is to build your rotation around your goals. So is there something that you want to get finished? Then just make sure it gets more time in your rotation. If you enjoy taking part in challenges that need specific projects, then build your rotation around either around those projects to make sure that you've got time for them in your rotation block or don't assign a specific project to that block just block that slot out as a challenge rotation and then put whichever project that you need for that challenge it is quite easy to get things to work how you want to get them to work but it does take a little bit of time to get there so what I've found is that most rotations seem to be either goals based or time based or a mix of the two. So when I talk about goals I mean that you switch projects based on working a certain number of stitches. I want to get 500 stitches in this project before I switch to another one. Or completing a page, reaching a percentage complete on your project which is a lot easier with pattern keeper now so you can see where exactly you are. Although the thing to remember that not all the charts are created equally so a regular heaven and earth designs chart has more stitches on a page than something like a gecko rouge or a Tolton crafts they have smaller pages so you're gonna finish a page of one quicker than the other and that's the same with percentages one percent on a mini is quicker to achieve than one percent on a super size and so in the past I've done page finish rotations and they did work really well and what I also did was have a random picker and then I just chose used that to choose what project I was going to work on next. That was okay although it was quite... the only problem for me with the random picker was if I didn't like it I'd re-spin it. <laughs> then that's just about being flexible isn't it? With a time based rotation you will switch your project based on time, obviously. So either working on a project for a certain number of hours, I think 10 hours is a popular one, or working in days, weeks or months. I mean, something like the time-based is good if you only count the time that you're working. It's very good for people that don't have as much consistent amounts of time as other people for people that are on odd schedules and I don't know could spend work funny hours at work so they can only spend certain times at their sewing so you to know that you're getting 10 hours on a project before you switch to another one that might be over the course of a couple of weeks say but that's okay because you're working for the same amount of time on each project and getting through them. So choosing a rotation type, it comes down to what will work best for you. So my current rotations, I made my decisions based on the fact that I don't count stitching hours, so that option's not going to work for me. I don't like to switch projects too frequently, so changing daily is not going to work for me either. And from previous rotation attempts, I only like to switch the evening projects once during a month. So if you've been following me for a while, you know that I work on quite a few projects. And I kind of divide them up 
into what they are. So in the morning before I start work, I work on a, a small non-full coverage piece, just like a tiny primitive piece or a sample or something. And I work on that for 30 to 45 minutes a morning. I don't count that in the rotation. I do have a few that I'm switching through on that, but it's not the same as my rotation for full coverage. And that is more, I feel like working on this one this week. Because they're small, I, can, I don't know, the decision's easier to make. And also the decision's more easily affected by, I'm nearly finished with this one, let's get it done. So I also have a weekday lunchtime project which at the moment is Bizarre Bookshelf, and Weekend Morning Project, which is Nightmare. Now, those two projects are set in stone, really. I don't have any desire to switch from those to another project. So those two slots are firmly penciled in, and until they're finished, that's what they'll be for. And then I have my evening stitching, and this is where, where I... What, I have the rotation for. So the, the evening projects that I'm working through at the moment is Trick or Treat, A Stitch in Time, and I've just finished Faces of Fairy. So that's what I've been, those are the ones that I count in my rotation as such. And I think it was last year I had that rotation divided within the month to two weeks, one week and one week. So in a month I would be working on three projects. And while I was doing that, I just got really annoyed with switching projects so frequently. It's it between the two single week ones. It's like, so the sooner you're getting things organised, get them out to get stitching on them, then you're having to, well, it's because of the way I store my projects, I'm having to shuffle everything to, to get it put away and get the next one out again. And it just annoyed me, so it's like that was a sign that I needed to change the rotation. And so from that, I know that I'm happy to work on two big pieces a month in the evenings. So I could divide the month evenly, so two weeks on one, the rest of the month on another. Uh, but what I found is I like to spend more time on a focus piece. And this is something that kind of works hand in hand with the rotation, but you don't have to have one. A focus piece is just something that you want to spend more time on. Uh, you might want to spend more time on it because you really enjoy working on it and you want to see more progress on it. You can be working on it because that could be your focus piece that month because it's a birthday piece and or you've got a deadline that you want to get it finished by or it's quite close to a finish so you want to give it more time because get it finished or um, sometimes people use their focus pieces, the piece that they've been stitching on for the longest, so they want to obviously get through, get it finished, get it up on the wall. So with mine, when I started writing these notes, I realised I'm actually at my goal, almost. I am almost at the point where I can fit all of my evening whips into a rotation spread over two months. So that's the other thing I do, I switch the projects every other month. So if I go back a couple of months, so I have the six pieces, because yeah I'm down to five now, uh, then let me explain my process a bit more. So firstly the focus pieces, projects I stitch on for three weeks a solid 21 days on it. So the first one of those is Trick or Treat by Randall Spangler, which hopefully is the one that you're watching me stitch at the moment. 
and that one gets three weeks because I really enjoy stitching on it. It's a beautiful thing to stitch. I Sometimes I just find a project that brings me a lot of joy when I'm stitching it. Trick or treat gets there. So does Bizarre Bookshelf. And they're both my biggest pieces. But they're a lot of fun to stitch. Um, so the reason, as well as enjoying it, is because of the size of it. It is not quite a super size, but one of the dimensions is over 900. So I think it's almost a super size. And if I don't stitch on it, I'm not going to see any progress on it. And since I've been using it as a focus piece, I've made a lot of progress and I'm on halfway through the second row of pages already and yeah, still enjoying it. And the second piece that was my focus was Faces of Fairy and the reason I chose that was because I wanted to get, I had this in my head that I wanted to get down to the four projects, so two each month. And it, I knew it wouldn't take me that long to get finished. So it probably wasn't closest to a finish, but it was close enough to a finish. So that, that went on there. So basically I have two focus pieces. One is a fun focus and the other one is my get it finished focus. Um, the other thing I had to take into consideration with that was picking something to work on that I didn't mind working on for 21 days. A stitch in time is lovely. I do not think I could stitch on that for three weeks solid. It's much trickier. I need to concentrate a lot more. <laughs> maybe once I'm through these pink flowers, it will change. And maybe when I find myself eventually many years down the line getting closer to finishing it then I might want to spend more time on it but that's not a decision for now that's for later at the moment the main point is getting it worked so that leaves three projects that didn't fit into the rotation In theory, I could put one of those three into the other month instead of working on a stitching time every month, which I've been doing, I could switch out. And the reason that I have been doing the stitch, the working on the stitching time every month is because at the start of the year, I set myself a little, little goal of it'd be really nice to get this first row of pages finished. <laughs> I've done a lot because I've done almost two columns of pages down the middle, but just seeing that top row of pages done, that was a goal. And actually, I'm really nearly there. So I think I'm going to keep it as it is at the moment every month, one week. Well, the rest of the month. So it's about nine or ten days, depending on the month. And... And get that page, get that row of pages finished, and then have the two projects each month. But <laughs> that's why we're there at the moment. So the the pieces that I'm currently leaving out of the rotation are Death Head Moth, uh, Unicorn, and A Little Light Reading. And if I was to bring one in the other one week project it would be a little light reading. So let's go on to how I'm going to change my rotation because of Faces of Fairies finished. So oh see finish a project opens up a space in the rotation which is great. If I didn't have anything else waiting in the wings as it were then I could have a new start. Um, and I should have planned for that. <laughs> uh, I knew that I'd be bringing in my other projects. So, because I still got three, technically two, I say two because we'll, we'll pretend 
that I've put a little, a little light reading in on that other one week slot. So, uh, so a stitch in time and trick or treat we worked this month. And then next month it would have been Faces of Fairy, but she's finished. And for the one week, a little light reading. So the available projects that I've got for that slot are Death Head Moth. And on that, I only have 15,500 stitches left to do. Sounds like a lot, but in those 21 days, I'm getting close to 10,000 stitches, maybe? Possibly. It was a lot. I've been getting a lot done. I don't think it will take long to finish Death Head Moth. Unicorn has 36,895 stitches, so that's not quite so close to finish. I think Moth's at 76% and Unicorn is 26% complete. With the little light reading, I've got 101. 1,806 stitches left to do. So that one is the furthest from a finish. But it is quite a fun stitch. So Death Head Moth is closest to a finish. That's the one that's going back into the road going well, back into the rotation because it was before. It's going in in November. So the way I decide my, my sole reason for how what gets stitched when is because I absolutely had to stitch Trick or Treat in October. A Halloween piece in October has to be done. There should be a rule again for that. There is, it's Dark 13 stitching. So, <laughs> October, Dark October stitching. So Trick or Treat every year gets stitched in October. So that was my starting point and I just worked everything out from there. So that's kind of kind of where I am. Once Moth is finished, then Unicorn goes into that three week slot. I am actually quite confident that I can get Unicorn finished, well, Moth and Unicorn finished next year. Probably be late next year, but I reckon they'll be finished. So, the, the other thing that I was going to add was that I joined in with the challenges in the Full Coverage Fanatics group on Facebook. And both Moth and Unicorn are full coverage pieces, but I don't count them as full coverage pieces for that because they've got bits that go outside of the background of the project. Unicorn is more of a shaped project, so the area that's not stitched kind of excludes it from those challenges. But luckily the Gecko Rouge group have a monthly stitch as much as you can kind of challenge so I join in on that instead with those pieces and as I said I've got Bizarre Bookshelf and Nightmare that come up every week so I can I can still take part in counting challenges so yay I don't know if I'll get a stitch in time row finished this month. If I do, if that is finished, then I will be working on a little light reading in November as well. So essentially my rotation is going to be four pieces spread over two months. Two of those pieces will get three week, the first three weeks of the month and then the remaining two pieces will get what's left in that month. So it's taken me a little while to get to 
a rotation that I'm happy with. I mean, sometimes I pick things up and I don't feel like working on it, but hey, it's my sewing, I can stitch on what I want still. If there's something that I really feel the burning need to stitch on, I will do. But I do tend to be fairly good at sticking with this one. It's There's a change in there, so you get a change of colours. And that's another th reason why people want a rotation, they just want to work on something different. If you've got a project that's a <laughs> stitch in time, very, very heavy on pink flowers, and you're sick of the sight of pink flowers, then switching that over to something that's full of blues and dark colours is much... It's a rest for the eyes and a reset so you can... You can come back fresh to those pink flowers. <laughs> it really is these pink flowers that are doing me in on, on a stitching time. I'll be so glad when I get to the summer shelves. Um, so, <laughs> so, yeah, it's, this has worked for me. And it's taken a good few years to get something that works for me. Um, the other rotations that I've done have worked for me and they've worked for me for the goals that I wanted to achieve and what I wanted to get done. So this now, I've kind of reached my comfort point this three, three weeks, rest of the month. So depending on the month, that's either going to, the lowest it's going to be is a week in February. Otherwise, it's nine or ten days, which is, for me, it's a good amount of time to get a good chunk of a page done. I do stitch quickly. I do have a lot of time available to me to stitch. I am very lucky with that. And I think if you... You really do need to consider what you have available to you when you're working on a rotation. I have a consistent amount of time each day that I can stitch on. So stitching every day, so doing it for weeks, a couple of weeks, works perfectly for me. If I had a very busy lifestyle with an odd working schedule then it probably wouldn't work because some weeks I wouldn't be able to get see the progress that I wanted to see. So change things up to suit yourself. Make it work for you. Unfortunately though Linda there is no way to work on everything at once. It does it I would love to be able to do that. There's so many pieces I want to start <laughs> it's, it's not just a matter of having an extra pair of hands is it it's actually having another brain to be able to process the symbols of that other project what a disaster it would be uh, so <laughs> there is no magic wand it's just like stitching you find something that's comfortable you find something that works for you and until you do keep changing just make small adjustments Oh, that's the other thing that I would want to add. If you are currently a monogamous stitcher and you're thinking, I want I want to start all these things. There's, there's loads of lovely stuff out there. I want to start it all. Be careful. That's how I got into the mess that I'm in at the moment. I I started ooh, Train, of, Train of Dreams, Randall Spangler, Train, Train of Dreams, all those years ago. And then happy stitching that like something else came along I think it was Faces of Fairy well it's only small I'll just stick it in and switch time between them and then there was another start and another start and another start and it got to the point of being quite overwhelming and I think that's when I was stitching in pages so finish a page switch projects finish a page and I reached the point where I got really upset because it would be so... If I put them in order and worked through them, which is another good way to deal with having lots, 
for me, I worked out how long it would take me to start seeing finishes. And it was too long. I I am someone who I really enjoy the journey that I, the stitching journey and I do these full coverage pieces because I don't want to be finished with things quickly. I want them to take a long time. But I do want to see them finished. And I like having the walls of my house filled with my stitching. And I've completed quite a few full coverages over the years. So it does work for me and it keeps me happy. But I just got to the point where there were some projects I was only working on once a year and I didn't like that because it would take too long but also it was too long between stitching on on those projects. I really enjoyed everything that I was working on. So once I reached that point something had to give and new starts had to give and I had to start getting, getting things finished. So partly why my focus pieces are two separate things. The, the one that's fun, the one that I want to work on the most, and the one I can get finished soonest. Once I've finished Unicorn, so at some point next year, I can have a new start. Now, I have lots to choose from, and I have quite a few Gecko Rouge kits. And because that would have been two Gecko finishes, I will probably start another Gecko Rouge which is brilliant because they're so much easier to just pick up and get started. I don't have to gather the threads myself. It's already, it's all done for me. So yay, next year. I'm looking forward to that. It was actually a really nice surprise when I was writing this out. I've only got two more that I need to shoe on in. I two more to get finished. So who knows, my rotation might change again once I've done that. I'm not sure I could ever get back to being a monogamous stitcher. It is nice to have a break from projects. And also you can do that with... That's another way to organise your rotation. Divide your projects up into groups. Work on one group for a while. Just switch between those. Just be happy with those. And then... Once you've worked on those for a bit, put them away and get another group out. Work through those for a bit. The rotation is just to plan what's coming up, what you want to do in the future. And I am a planner. I have a couple of planners that I've been fiddling with while I've been talking. And I like to keep track of things. I like to see how things are progressing. And so being able to say, this month I'm working on this, next month I'm working on that, that keeps my brain occupied and stops me thinking, what do I work on next? And then probably not working on anything because I can't make a decision. So, hopefully that has been of some help. We're kind of getting to the point of the year where everyone's starting to make their plans for next year now. I've got my plans. Well, I've got, got a planner ready. I've got things ready. Um, I'm also working in with the challenges that are coming up in the Full Coverage Fanatics group. As I said, I like to do their counting challenges. So it's quite easy to fit in when you know what you're going to be working on. And also, if you need to change your rotation to fit with certain goals, you can change it and you can plan that change in advance. So you're always prepared you always need to you always know what you need to have handy. So that is what I will spend the next couple of months doing, getting everything organised. And I hope this has helped. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And also if you if you have any rotation tips or advice, things that work from you work for you that others might find useful drop those in the comments below as well because it's good to help each other out when we've got these kind of problems and questions the more answers the, the more decisions around the, the, that gives you 
ideas for ways that you can tweak your own rotations to to make them perfect. So I will see you soon. I'll probably do a couple more stitch with me's during this month and I'll be back with my regular update at the end of the month. Bye for now.